I'm really happy to be here. Um, I also like to thank the foundation to support our research. Uh, in the five or six minutes or so, what I would like to do is uh, tell you a little bit what do we do in the lab as a scientist. Uh, so my lab uh, works on stem cells. Um, so you heard a lot of stem cells. In particular, we work on neural stem cells, which are the, the cells which eventually generate the, the cells in the nervous system and make up our brain and spinal cord, uh, the tissues. So as uh, you heard uh, from Tom, and uh, during development, uh, our brain are formed uh, coming from the stem cells. So early on, uh, the stem cells can divide, give rise to neurons, and the neurons actually have to migrate to find the right place and make the right connections. So, so this is what happened during development. And over the past decade or so, it become clear that if something wrong with this process, we're going to have a problem with our brain, um, either early on with autistic spectrum disorders or later on with mental illness. And it turned out uh, this process actually continues. Uh, so this normally happens in embryos. So it turned out this process continues in some part of our brain. One of them is in the hippocampus, uh, which is the part involving learning, memory, as well as uh, mood regulation. So in this case, it's also there are stem cells here that can divide and go through a developmental process and eventually become part of the brain. And here just show you, uh, we took some images of uh, new neurons from the stem cells, and pretty much they have a typical neural morphology. And these stem cells, uh, this process happens in uh, humans as well. And we actually are able to purify stem cells from surgical samples of patient and uh, show these cells can give rise to neurons. So using this as a model system, we try to understand if there's anything wrong with in the genetics uh, affects uh, the process of new development. So one example Sorry. is um, the gene actually, uh, Tom just mentioned, DISC1. So what we have done so far is actually try to manipulate uh, the expression of DISC1 in stem cells. And what we find is, actually, here's two examples. Uh, the cells actually have very abnormal um, morphology. The cells go to the wrong place. They make the wrong connections. And what this tells us is, is a one model system which may allow us to look into what's exactly wrong if you have a bad copy of gene, and can we do anything about it. So, so these are uh, research done in animal models. We also want to work on the, the human subjects, uh, because well, humans are not the same as mouse. One way to study that is we can't really just take, have people uh, volunteer to take their neurons out and study them. So what we can do is actually ask them to donate some uh, skin fibroblasts, just do a skin biopsy, a uh, very small biopsy. Uh, now technology allows us to do is we can turn these fibroblasts, put in factors to reprogram them. Now this fibroblast actually can turn into cells like embryonic stem cells. We can grow these cells in, the, in dish, then differentiate them uh, into neurons. Now we can study the real human neurons or patient neurons in dish and try to understand what's wrong with them. Can we do anything with them? Can we give them drugs to rescue uh, any defects we see? And this is also important, not only for just look at generic disease, but also as a person, everybody's different. So this gives us a hope to get into personalized medicine. We can look into whether everybody def uh, responds to the drug differently. So this is a great tool. So, so basically, is we, we grow the fibroblasts from the skin biopsy. We'll put in factors. Now we can turn them into cells to look like embryonic stem cells. And these cells express so-called markers of like embryonic stem cells. And probably more importantly, is now we can differentiate the cells into neurons, uh, expression neural stem cell markers, and into neurons, they actually really function like a neuron. So we can record from them and show they do the things neurons normally do, like uh, release neurotransmitters uh, for action potentials. So, so this is a great methodology now available to study mental illness, but also for many other uh, uh, degenerative neurological diseases. For example, uh, we can study uh, motor neuron disease in the case of ALS by getting motor neurons from the patient, uh, Huntington disease, uh, but also uh, the major interest is in my lab is try to understand neurons from a uh, patient with schizophrenia or depression. As we all science to do, uh, scientists do, is uh, we, we don't really work as uh, one person. Uh, so this is the group behind uh, my lab. There are uh, many talented young investigators in my lab doing the research. We have a lot of collaborations with colleagues at Hopkins, 
but across the world. Uh, we're working as a team, and that's uh, the future of science, and that's how science can be done. Thank you for your attention.